Hello, good morning everyone, which one here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at this TT Anderson 50mm f2 pancake lens. The price of this lens is only US $69, so it is one of the cheapest lens in the market, but it is also a pancake lens, which means the lens is super compact. So let's have a look at this TT Anderson pancake lens together, and as usual, I will share with you all my test results and also some of the real world photos that I shot with this lens. This TT Anderson 50mm f2 lens is a lens that is designed for full frame mirrorless cameras, but it is also available for pretty much every single mirrorless camera mount in the market. The Sony E, Canon RF, Nikon Z, Leica L, the APS-C Fujifilm X, Canon M, and also Micro Four Thirds. The sample I received from TT Anderson is for the Nikon Z but all the different versions they have the same optical design so the image quality and design of the lens is pretty much the same. The biggest selling point of this TT Anderson 50mm f2 lens is definitely its pancake compact design. The lens is approximately 3.5cm thick so it is really pretty compact and it is much much smaller than pretty much every 50mm full frame lens that I have tested on this channel over the last few years. But one difference is that this is a fully manual focus lens and it is a fully mechanical lens with no electronic contacts. The lens has a full metal construction. Pretty much everything that we can see and touch, apart from the glasses, is all made of metal, including the screw-on, front metal lens cap, and the metal lens mount. The construction of the lens is very good, very solid. The focus ring feels very smooth and very well dampened. There's no weird noise or inconsistent feeling when you are turning the focus ring. The aperture ring is located at the front and it also feels very satisfying when you turn it and feel the click's feedback. The front of the lens would extend a little bit when you change focus from infinity to closer focus distance, but even at the fully extended position, the lens is still pretty compact. I don't really know how TT Anderson can make a lens like this and only sell it for US $69. Even if the lens optical quality is absolutely rubbish, $69 is still not a bad deal at all because it is such a nice looking lens that has a very solid metal construction. And from my previous experience with TT Anderson lenses, I really don't think the optical quality would be terrible. Or would it? Well, let's have a look at the image quality now to find out. Okay, as usual, let's start with the image sharpness first. And let's have a look at the center of the image. At f2, the center is already very sharp. Contrast is also very good and I don't see any sign of chromatic aberration. Because of that, stopping down the lens doesn't really make any noticeable difference to the center sharpness. Until we reach f11, then the center is starting to soft a little bit because of diffraction. If we look at the corner, if I focus the image at the center, then the corner at f2 is really soft. But if I focus at the corner of the photo, then the corner sharpness, while it is still a bit soft, but it is much better. This suggests the lens has a bit of field curvature. Stopping down the lens would gradually improve the corner sharpness. At f5.6, the corner sharpness becomes quite good, and at f8, the corner sharpness becomes excellent. So this TT Anderson 50mm f2 lens image sharpness is quite similar to the typical pancake lenses, great center sharpness, but poor corner sharpness at wide open. Now let's see if this lens is suitable for taking close-up photos or not. The minimum focus distance of this TD Anderson lens is approximately half a meter or 1.6 feet, which is not the closest focus 50mm lens, but it is also not terrible. I do not know the exact number of the maximum magnification ratio, but looking at this photo that was shot at the minimum focus distance, I guess it is somewhere between 0 0.1 to 0 0.15 times. The sharpness at f2, shot at minimum focus distance, is alright. Stopping down to f2.8 and the center of the photo becomes very sharp. And now let's have a look at bokeh. Have a look at this test photo that was shot at f2. Background bokeh is 
pretty smooth in this photo. There isn't too much highlight near the edge of the bokeh balls and there also isn't too much sweary bokeh effect as well. And as I stop down the lens to f2.8, f4 and even f5.6, bokeh still remains reasonably run. For the foreground bokeh, that is the bokeh that is in front of the focus point, I do see a bit of sweary bokeh effect and sometimes it could turn into some funny shape near the corner too. Fortunately, this funny looking bokeh effect appears to be only obvious for the foreground bokeh and overall bokeh from this TT Allison lens is pretty present. Pancake lens usually suffer from pretty heavy vignetting because of its compact design. So let's have a look at this TT Allison 15mm f2 lens vignetting performance. At f2, there is some very noticeable light fall off near the corner of the photo. I see some pretty dark corner, not only in this test photo, but also in my real world photos as well. Stopping down the lens to f2.8, vignetting becomes much better, but still the corners are much darker than the center. At f4, vignetting is much less obvious now, but I would say you need to stop down to around f8 for vignetting to become pretty minor. Stopping down the lens further from f8 makes virtually no difference to the amount of vignetting. In terms of chromatic aberration control, TTSN did a reasonably good job at minimizing the amount of color fringing with this 50mm lens. For most of my high contrast photos that I shot at f2, there is only quite a small amount of color fringing. This photo is probably the worst example I got from the few hundred photos I shot with this lens. It is a very, very high contrast photo. You can see a little bit of purple fringing, especially if we zoom in at 200%. But I would say it is still very well controlled, especially for a $69 lens. Usually 15mm lens don't have too much distortion. But if we look at this brick wall test photo, I can see a bit of pink cushion distortion. It is not very serious, but the amount of distortion is a little bit more than the average 15mm lens. In a few of my previous TT Allison lens review, I mentioned lens flare is the biggest weakness of those lenses. And unfortunately, this is more or less the same for this TDRSN 15mm f2 pancake lens. Very often, I would see quite a bit of ghosting when shooting into a strong light source. But the biggest problem is the drop in contrast when shooting with a strong light source in front of the camera. And it could make shooting at nighttime a bit tricky when there are some strong light source in front of the camera. Usually the issue is most noticeable when the light source is just outside the frame. A lens hood would usually help minimize this kind of lens flare issue, but this lens doesn't come with a lens hood and it probably shouldn't because it is a pancake lens after all. So you don't want to add a lens hood that would easily double the size of the lens. So one thing you can do is use your hand to help block the light source a bit. And in most cases, it would help minimize the lens flare and improve the contrast quite a bit. If you want to have some nice long and sharp sun stars in your photo, you will need to stop down the lens to around F8. At F8, you will see the 10 points sun stars. And when you stop down the lens further, the sun stars become very sharp and the tails getting longer. I'm definitely a bit surprised I could get some beautiful sun stars from this pancake lens. Let's have a look at this lens comma performance. At the maximum aperture f2, there is quite a bit of comma at the corner of the photo. You can see the butterfly shape pattern very easily in this test photo. Stopping down the lens to f2.8 would improve that quite a bit. And at f4, comma is not really noticeable anymore. If you are thinking of using this TD Allison lens to do some videography, the lens doesn't have the declared aperture ring that some of you may want. But the focus ring is very smooth and the 135 degree focus throw allows you to have pretty precise focus control. In terms of focus breathing, well, focus breathing is pretty obvious. Look at this test footage. I shot at f8 and I changed the focus from 1 meter to infinity. There is some pretty noticeable focus breathing. 
So while you definitely can still use this lens to do some videography, I think this lens is much more suitable for photographers. I have mentioned many times on this channel before, camera lens design is always about making compromises. Compromise between image quality, price, size, and a few other things. So to create a super affordable pancake lens that has a reasonably fast f2 maximum aperture, there would be no doubt a lot of compromises. So with this TT Allison 50mm f2 lens, it has some of the weakness like most typical pancake lenses, poor corner sharpness, pretty serious vignetting, especially at the maximum aperture, which is what I completely expected and not surprised at all. This is a pancake lens and you just can't defeat physics. So I really have no complaint about these issues and that's the price you have to pay when you are getting a pancake lens. However, I do really hope TT Addison can improve their lens coding as this is not the first time I noticed more than average lens flare issue with a TT Addison lens. But we have to be realistic, the price of this lens is just US $69. It is extremely cheap even for a lens from China and to be honest, I think TT Addison did a pretty amazing job overall and despite some of the flaws, I think TT Addison is probably selling this lens a little bit too cheap. The overall image quality is pretty acceptable. It's good enough that I definitely would be happy to carry it with me and use it to take some photos, especially when I want a compact setup that I can take with me easily. And as I've mentioned before, I'm very impressed by the lens build quality. The solid metal construction combined with the very smooth focus ring, the clicks from the aperture ring together just make this lens a very satisfying lens to hold in your hand and use it to take photos. If you have been thinking about trying some many focus lens but not too sure if it's something that is suitable for you or not, this US $69 TT Allison 50mm f2 lens would be a pretty affordable way for you to try it yourself to find out.